Pick up your dinosaur figures at Big Bad Toy Store at the link in the description. Kaiju, Turtles, Dragon Ball, and more at Steven Story Reviews. Hey there, Collector Steven here, and welcome back to not only another dinosaur review, but STR. Yeah! Congrats! We're back to full swing, and what better way to come back than with a review of the Hammond Collection Tyrannosaurus Rex from Jurassic Park or Rexy. Yep, I'm just gonna go ahead and call it Rexy for shorthand. So, just real quick to get into it, first and foremost, this is gonna be the first review that I've completed entirely from start to finish in the new studio setup. What's new about it? Basically, on the, on the editing and completion end, not a whole lot, but things are just easier for me to get done. And here, uh, Rexy. Wow, my favorite character from when I was a kid. Honestly, gotta love it. Now she has her first real honest action figure that collectors, both adults and those knee-high to a grasshopper alike, can enjoy. When she first hit the market, super scarce, people were scalping this thing, and oh boy, prices were through the roof. But now the market has kind of settled down, and she is very easy to get a hold of. So with that being said, is this going to be one dinosaur you should have in your collection, or maybe you should hold out for something a bit more scientifically accurate? Or should you maybe wait for a repaint? Well, it's Rexy, so I think you already have your answer. But let's take a look to see whether or not she's going to be worth adding into your collection. Rexy is big, <laughs> obviously, and that's one of the points of the Hammond collection overall, which I'll talk about that in a second. So just something to really keep in mind. Yeah, I did kind of just at the jump say, hey, I got a new review space and a new studio set up and all that fun stuff. So I'm able to do things a bit differently. Big figures still working on that. And yes, Rexy is size very, very, very sizable. And we'll see that in the size comparison section. So if something does look a little bit off again, I'm kind of getting used to everything with the new setup and lights and all that. So, hey. Please be gentle. But Rexy here, I do have to say, on both sides of the coin here, we have looks absolutely amazing, but then at the same time, ugh, Mattel just kind of missed it on the nose for a few things with Rexy. So what works, what doesn't, what should we be upset about, and what should we just say? Eh, it's mass produced, don't worry. Well, first and foremost, obviously, this looks very spot on to Rexy. It's not going to be one to one, but if you were to take a look at this, if you were to see this on the shelf, which a heartwarming tale from back when I did my Jack's Pacific Godzilla stuff for King of the Monsters, I did see a little one say Rexy and went up to grab it. So that makes my heart warm. She does look very accurate to the source material. And of course, when we translate this over from a CGI model, or if we're going to go with the actual animatronic that was used into a plastic action figure, liberties will be taken. We do have the bigger feet, so this way she is able to balance a bit better. We do have some dull teeth compared to the razor sharp ones we would expect of something that is meant to be an adult collectible, which this isn't exactly that. And of course, proportion wise, we can't be one to one to the screen, which, hey, it is what it is. Now, with the paint application for the majority of Rexy, where it is, I think it is executed rather well. And I do think that the quality control, I will say that there have been a couple of things that have slipped by. Someone in my Discord actually had one without any painted feet. Yes, that happened. <laughs> Fun to look at. But when it comes to the quality control, I think there are a couple of things to talk about. One of note on mine in particular will show is that unfortunately she has a couple of scratch marks on her belly from the ab crunch articulation. It looks like there was a piece of plastic uh, that just kind of scratched it up. The eyes are also something as well. Going all the way back to my childhood, there was the Bull T-Rex. You pretty much know what I'm talking about right off the cuff. With the Bull T-Rex, apparently what they did back then is they used glass for the eyes and they painted the pupil behind it uh, on the plastic and they put the glass over it. So that's how they did the pupil. That's how it was told to me. I don't know if it's true, but that is apparently what they did here for Rexy as well. Unfortunately, this has led to a wide variety of different eyes for Rexy. Some straight on, they're narrow, dead center of the eye, looks good. Others, like mine, for the right eye, she's looking down. And some of the promotional materials, most specifically for the outpost, outhouse chaos, the, the, the one with the, 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 the nighttime Rexy, Mattel actually photoshopped her eyes to be in one specific direction for each picture. So they kind of did whatever they wanted to do to get the shot that they wanted to get. Something to keep in mind. 
Now, mysteriously as well, I've also heard of what's called floating eye with this figure, where over time, the pupil will slowly move. Don't know if that's true, but that's what I've seen. So, I've been long-winded so far. What's the scoop on Rexy? She looks good. Quality control-wise, they can tighten things up here and there, but it's a mass-produced figure for 50 bucks of a large size, and it's a T-Rex action figure. I think we can be forgiving in some areas, except for the neck, which is made of rubber. If you look at it very closely, it is a completely different color than the parts that are around it. That's something that's kind of not forgivable. Okay, so being a big articulated dinosaur, <laughs> I have to uh, do the articulation section just a little bit different, so bear with me. Uh, Rexy's articulation is rather rock solid. Um, I do think overall. There are a couple of issues universally, though. It seems like some folks are having some problems with, and, uh, well, let's talk about that. So, first, Rexy is going to have a hinged jaw system, which is good, you know, very, very good. Uh, the way that it works, though, is she's effectively going to have somewhat open and then very open, and you can hear the clicks there going. Um, it is seemingly on a ratchet, so you can't really have anywhere in between. See how it sort of springs into place there? So that's something to really keep in mind for the dynamic posability of the figure. Likewise, we do have a tongue, which is going to be on a hinge, and it opens and closes. While, for the most part, with the mouth, that is mostly fine, I do think that the wide open stance does look a little goofy. But, you know, some semblance of in-between would have been better, I think. Now, we do have the head which plugs into the neck on a ball joint, so we can get Rexy to kind of look around in all sorts of different directions. Which is very good. She can look up and down just fine. And then this portion here, as I made mention before, is going to be made on a softer plastic, essentially rubber. But that's going to plug in to the body on a ball joint as well which will enhance Rexy's articulation even more, as you can see there, how she can all look around, and even spin the head around from side to side. Now, for the arms. Uh, well, I can try to turn her around, but uh, not really doing so hot there. Let me zoom in to help show you. You can see a little cut here. That's because there are hinges to move Rexy's shoulders in and out. These were stuck on mine, and I needed to heat them up, and then I was able to get them to move. They do also swivel. For the elbows, we do have a hinge, which allows you to move the arms forward and back, and a swivel there to allow you to move the elbow around, kind of like a de facto bicep swivel. Wrists have hinges and swivels as well. So that's pretty cool. All right, let's back it back up, and let's keep it going. So... For Rexy's ab crunch, it is a ball joint which has a great range of movement. You can see how Rexy can perch up like that, twist from side to side, spinning. Not really possible here, as you can see. But as you can clearly see, moving up and down, that really helps with her movement. Here, uh, nope, we're not going to talk about that. Let's talk about the tail. So the tail is obviously going to be like the rest of the Hammond Collection figures where we're going to need to plug it in and where it plugs in is going to be on a ball joint. I cannot remove the tail so this is going to be one of the situations where where you plug it in it's going to stay. Then we have this section which is on a ball joint and then we have this segment which is not on a swivel or anything that's just an odd cut there. Uh, we do have a bendy wire tail though it doesn't really feel like a bendy wire and sometimes when I grab it and uh, here it just doesn't really want to move at all, and it kind of feels like a hard piece of plastic, and then it goes into a wire. So I don't know what's going on particularly here, but this portion of Rexy's tail is meant to be a bendy wire. Now for the legs. This is why I wanted to come back. So the legs are the point of contention with this figure. Like I made mention, some folks don't like the uh, quote-unquote clown feet, but that's not really going to be the big issue. So for the hips, they do swivel. And they sort of lock into place in a neutral position. You can kind of see it just wants to do that. Well, we do have double hinged knees. Maybe they want to move. There we go. So we can get that sort of range of movement there, right? Pretty good. Okay. Then here, just below that, we have single hinge and swivel. And then for the ankles... We have a single hinge and swivel as well to spin from side to side and also ankle rocker movement. Very good. To circle back real quick for the hips, kind of sort of not really on a ball joint. 
but we can spin the whole leg around on a swivel with seemingly a locking ratchet in a more neutral position. So why is this kind of eh? Rexy is rather large, if you haven't figured that out. And what this does is it puts weight on these weaker joints towards the bottom of the legs. This has caused a lot of folks to have weaker joints for their Rexy, which isn't that great, and has caused quite a few issues with toppling over from what I've been able to see so far. A couple of folks have made mention in my Discord. I've seen a couple of reviews here and there on Facebook of people talking about it. So, yeah, something to keep in mind. Mine, kind of, sort of loose, nothing over the top. Um, sometimes when she's in certain poses, the joints will sort of give out. They're... they're they have rather easy give on mine, but it, it's nothing super serious. The biggest issue, kind of like I showed you already, is going to be here for the ab crunch, the scratched paint. Overall, the articulation for Rexy is just fine. Um, only thing I can say is just a better tail. That would realistically be it, and just better range in some parts. But hey, I mean, for the price, I think we did just fine. Size comparison time, and is she in scale 100% super duper accurate? I mean, who knows? She's big. She's she's a giant T-Rex figure in a one, what is it, 135 scale? Is that where we're at? Or 118? Uh, who knows? It's smaller dinosaurs, smaller scale. Looks good. Blends in well with the Hammond collection already. No accessories. That's what another Rexy release is going to be for. So buy now, skip, or wait for a deal. I think this is going to be one of those situations where if you really love Rexy, then obviously this is going to be a no-brainer. You're going to want to pick this one up. It's a very good figure just from the design alone and just in concept. There are going to be some things that they had to do with this figure in order to actually make it work. Smaller feet, eh, not good with the design. You can see that with custom figures needing a support stand, even with Rebor with a recent more so scientifically accurate Tyrannosaurus Rex. I forget what the name of that one is in particular, the, the new one with with the lips uh that one needs a support stand so it doesn't topple over so clearly mattel had to do some give and take here in order to give us a hammond collection rex and honestly it's okay it's not that big of a deal in hand okay clown feet if you don't like it then you don't like it can't convince you otherwise some of the quality control stuff though i do think that for the price Maybe that could be dialed in a bit better, especially considering if you take a look online, it looks like the price for the Hammond collection is starting to go up overall. Here's the sort of catch-22, if you will, with this release. Is it good? Yes. However, this is the start of the Hammond collection line. The Amber collection was stopped because they weren't able to do these larger dinosaurs in a realistic capacity. They just could not deliver a 112th scale Tyrannosaurus Rex. That doesn't make any sense. However, they got the Tyrannosaurus Rex out the gate early to attract a lot of people into the lineup. And now, if they're going to make future ones, they're going to go back to this one, which isn't necessarily perfect as their go-to model for what they need to do for the larger dinosaurs moving forward. So, is this the best Rexy that Mattel could have possibly done? Not really, but is this going to be the basis for everything else moving forward because it's what everyone bought? Unfortunately so. I'm not saying this is bad, I'm just saying I think there are a couple of things Mattel could have dialed in a bit better. I love this, I think you just might as well, but it could just be a little bit better. Well, collectors, that brings us to the end of the video today, and I just wanted to take a second to thank you so much for watching. Now, you've heard a lot from me. I'd like to hear a little bit from you. Drop in the comments down below whether or not you liked it, you hated it, or maybe you were somewhere in between. I also want to take an extra second here for a nice, humongous thank you to all the patrons for SDR over the last month who have really helped the channel grow into what it can be today. So to all of you, two big thumbs up. Thank you very much. And now the end card should be popping up, which will give you a few clickable links, like maybe to subscribe or head on over to my Patreon, or some short URLs, like to my social media or to my Teespring store. There's also a video I hand-selected for you, so if you want to watch another STR video, I hand-selected some good content for you to watch, so definitely check out that video. Thank you again so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.